And what is up guys, it's your Average Gear Reviewer here, back again with another one for you. And if you looked at the thumbnail, I'm course, of course, I'm sure that you know this one is going to be about the Civivi Vision FG. Well, bam So let's get into it and find out if this knife is all that it's cracked up to be. Yeah, but don't a lot of people consider the Civivi Vision FG the knife of the year for 2023? Well, yeah. I mean, a, a lot of people have, have said that about it, yeah. And, and you know, there's reason. Well, yeah, but didn't Metal Complex say that it was like one of his favorite yeah. Civivis? <laughs> yeah, he did. And and that was one of the reasons that I got one of them was because. And, or you, I guess you're going to tell us how it was designed by Snake Stan, right? Well, yeah, I, I was going to get into that cool. and, and tell all them about it. Um, but, you know. You... Yeah, no, but you're not even going to mention the controversy about the. Okay, super I'm, lock, are you? I'm going to cut you off right there. Got, roll the intro. Listen, you can't be. You can't be talking to me off screen. I had no idea that you were going to do that. The best gear is the gear you have on you. Okay, guys. And as I always say, before I was so rudely interrupted, welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. As I said before, in this one, we are going to be taking a deep dive into the Civivi Vision FG. Find out what makes it so great. Uh, talk a little bit about the, who designed it. We'll get it over on the bench and take a look at the specs on it first. And at the end, guys, I'm going to address a little bit about the controversy involving this knife and particularly the locking system, um, if you know, you know. And also, at the very end, I've got a trick for you with the Civivi Vision FG that it, I bet you didn't know because I didn't know it until about five minutes ago. But anyway, guys, let's get it over onto the bench and get into it. Featuring a reverse Tanto style 3.54 inch blade made of German Nitro V steel offering a high amount of corrosion resistance and edge retention with a slight hollow grind tapering down to a super sharp edge making the Civivi Vision FG a super slicing knife. You can see there's plenty of room to sharpen there at the sharpening choil. And the thumb studs on the right hand side. Very little billboarding on this knife, which is great. On this particular model, you have the canvas green micarta scales with a very nice, sort of weathered look to them. You'll notice the C at the pivot there is the only thing that shows it's a Civivi knife, as far as I can see on the knife. The speed holes there to reduce, reduce some of the weight. And you can see the cutout at the back of the knife that does allow you to swap the pocket clip between right or left handed. And you have about a 4.5 inch handle, which gives you an overall length of 7.95 inches. Looking at the tail of the knife, you can see that it does have a nice flat carry pocket clip. It's mounted a slightly off center on the scales with the clip point following right in between two of the speed holes. You can see there that the are steel steel liners all the way from one end to the other. No shadow boxing there. They're just sort of even with the edge of the handles. And you can see there the nice beveling too at the edges of the micarta handles and also there at the speed holes. Here you can see the T8 pivot. Also, you can see that the thumb studs are on both sides of the blade. And a little bit of billboarding there as you can see that it is does feature the Design by Snex logo. And here's a little bit closer look at that super lock system. You can see it does have some nice jimping there. You can also see the thickness of the blade and you can see those thumb studs stick out pretty far on each side of the blade there. Again, you can see the beveling on the G10 scales is consistent throughout. Just shows off the fit and finish of this, of this knife. Okay guys, so we've got the Civivi Vision FG over here on the bench, so we can take a little bit closer look at it, because really, you know, the specs can tell you a lot about a knife, but there's a lot that you just can't, you, there's a feel factor that you just can't get from the specifications, and I can tell you all day long about the weight of the knife, the length of the knife, I can tell you about, you know, the balance, let's see where the balance point is on it. Okay, so, so it's just slightly behind the, where you grip with the finger there. 
The speed holes do a lot to alleviate some of the weight of the handle, so it does feel very balanced in the hand. The canvas green micarta scales are, not only do they look really nice, but they do have a very functional feel to them. They feel very grippy. And I think that that pocket clip is actually set like that for a reason. If you'll notice, it doesn't exactly run straight along the scale here. It actually runs straight more with in line with the knife. And I will, at the end of the video here, I'm going to show you a trick that I promise you, you, you don't know about the Civivi uh, Vision FG. And uh, I, I believe that the placement of the pocket clip does have something to do with that. But guys, I have slightly larger hands. I wear an extra large size glove normally. It fits in my hand perfectly. I, I, it just fits perfectly into my hand. The pocket clip does not. I'm really gripping down on it here. And it maybe it's just where it's hitting my hand. It's It just doesn't create a hot spot for me. I know some people have had issues with that. In my opinion, there's a lot of things that they did well on the Vision FG. The shark lock is absolutely unbelievable. The lockup on it is just incredible, guys. This is another one of those things that you, you're you not going to get from watching the video. Uh, you just have to get one in your hands. And, and if you'd like to, I do have a link down in the description, uh, Amazon affiliate link where you can get one. And it's probably about the least expensive place that you'll find one of them. But you know, that's one of the things that you're just not going to know until you get your hands on one. And if you already have one, guys, you know what I'm talking about. The knife just has an incredible feel to it. It feels very well thought, very well designed. If you know the history of the knife, it was initially designed by Snex Tan. He's a Filipino designer. Um, and he created a custom version of this knife. We collaborated with him i believe and created the we vision r was what it was called and then civivi eventually came out with the vision fg which is the current model that we're looking at today so this is a third generation from a custom but if you want to get one of this next tan customs good luck i think that they are they run three thousand dollars and that's if you can get your hands on one the we vision r is a little more into that affordable range i'm not really sure what they're running but guys, this knife for the price, you can pick them up right now for, I believe in the Amazon link I've got below, I think they're $74 for this particular model. They do have the black G10 handle model, which I really like. Um, it wasn't available at the time that I got mine. They had this one. They had a white handle one, which you can still get. It's the white G10 handles with the Damascus blade. But I like the Nitro V blade black wash. I was wanting to get something that would go with a little more green, so I didn't mind the green canvas micarta scales. I honestly wish that they would have had the black one available because I probably would have got that. Um, but yeah, guys, overall, very solid knife. I can see why a lot of people think that this should be knife of the year for 2023. I know I'm a little late to the party here with the uh, review, but I like to carry it around for a little bit and really get a feel for it because that's what I want to... That's what I want to give you guys a sense of in the video is the feel for it because that's the one thing you can look at it online all you want. You can look at the specifications and go, oh, it's got a, a 3.5 inch blade and, a, you know, it's almost eight inches overall. OK, yeah, that's cool. But that doesn't tell you how it feels in your hand. And I can tell you guys in the hand, it feels excellent. It feels like it's very purposefully designed. Yeah. Just very slicey little knife. Again, my really my only real criticism on it is I wish that they would have done some jimping on the back of the blade here. It just I don't understand why it's not there. It it would lend itself so well for that because you could see up here you've got so much room before you're going to hit the the sharpening choil here. So ton of room to sharpen on this knife, and it also gives you perfect amount of room to get your index finger underneath there to go up into that sort of pinch grip and. It would work so well on this knife and and you can kind of dig into the thumb studs there i guess but there's no jimping i i just think jimping right along here would make it absolutely perfect and i do understand you can get your you like the shark lock has jimping on it that you can grab a hold of but that puts your hand way back here and it just doesn't feel as natural so you know i just really wish that it, they had done some jimping right here along the blade just to give you a little more of that control um, option when you're in that that forward kind of pinch grip there. But otherwise, that's really my only, that's the only thing about the knife. I mean, you know, with all the Civivis, the pocket clip you get, it's a very rudimentary pocket clip. 
it's basic, but it works. It works just fine. This one's got the longer clip, so it actually holds it in the pocket there very well. It does have flat lace screws behind it, so uh, not too big of a flat spot on the top here. It's got that nice spoon and got a good spring to it, so the pocket clip is adequate. There's nothing wrong with it. You do have pins back here where you could put a lanyard on it if you want to on uh, some of these offsets back here. But the shark lock actually takes up a lot of the room back here behind, you know, behind your blade. So, uh, and I like that. It fills in the back of the handle nicely. The speed holes, I believe, this is one other thing. I'll just, one ticky little picky thing I'll say on it. And I don't know if you can see it on here because I think I've cleaned most of them up. But when I got it, there was a little bit of burrs on the, on the micarta in there, which that's just such a picky thing. I understand. But, you know, you wanted to know what I thought about it. And so I'm telling you. <laughs> and I'm still really not sure what this knife, what this hole here is for. I'm sure somebody that knows more about the knives can tell you. But I, I, I'm really not sure. Um, there is one more thing I wanted to get into on this knife. Uh, and it's... There's a little bit of controversy going on about this. Well, I say a little bit of controversy. In the knife community, it seems to be a huge controversy about this knife. And, um, you know, it's about the locking system. There's some people say that the Super Lock is a copy of the Shark Lock. There's other people who say that the Shark Lock is a copy of the Super Lock. Guys, the best research that I could do and the best information that I could find to give you is that these... And without tearing the knives apart and getting into the locking systems, they're not exact, they're not identical locking systems from my understanding. I think in a future video, I'm going to take both of these apart and really do a deep dive on the locking system. So I, just so I can see for myself, my understanding is the locking system is slightly different. Snex Tan, he came up with his design, I believe it was in 2015. I don't think that it was ever patented. I was not able to find a patent for the super lock design. Now they may have patented it since then. I'm not sure, but the research that I could find is that at that time it wasn't patented. Uh, I know that he was very active on Instagram around that time. And there are people who think that who've said before that they, they thought that Demco might have taken the idea for the shark lock design from him. I don't know. I don't think that that's true. What I think that what I think happened, and and this happens a lot in invention, guys, is I think two people came up with a really similar idea independently of each other. I, I honestly believe that just that's the best that's the best guess that I can come up with based on the information that I've been able to get a hold of. Now I know this is probably going to start some kind of war in the comments, guys. Please let, let's be respectful. Let's be civil to each other. Um, there's no need for name calling. We're all grown ups. We can discuss it like adults, but please don't start a flame war in the comments down below over this. This is the best information that I was able to get. I'm sure somebody's going to pop in down there and tell me, no, you're wrong. This is what you're okay. But buddy, listen, this is the best information that I was able to gather with my research. And I think that's really the impression that I get is that these two locking systems are similar but they're not identical. And there's been a lot of systems, a lot of locking systems that have been co-opted by other people and used. Um, and in some of those cases, I believe the patents ran out on them. And so they just kind of became fair game. The access lock's a good example of that. You know, that was kind of Benchmade's proprietary thing. And now there are tons of knives that have uh, an access lock type system on it. So uh, let's take a look at the, uh, let's do a little bit of size comparisons on this one. Obviously I've got the, uh, Titan the uh, Flatanium Arcade out here so we can you can kind of see those are very very similar in size to each other and continuing on the shark lock theme we can go ahead and throw up the Demco AD 20.5 again you can see they're very very similar in size um, let's throw the uh, of course the old Spyderco PM3 up there you can see the handles are similar in size but the blade is quite a bit longer Let's take a look at how about we put up the bug out, bench made bug out with the crossfade flatanium scales there. Real close to the bug out size, still a little bit larger as you can see. Um, and then one more, let's put up the O knife Roboto 2 or the Kaiser Drop Bear with the sheep's foot blade. So you can see it's a little bit larger than sort of like what you would consider the uh, smaller, I guess, or middle range EDC knives. It's a little bit larger. So that'll t that uh, just kind of gives you an idea of where the uh, Vision FG is going to fall sort of in the uh, hierarchy there. Okay, so guys, let me grab my cup of coffee and I'll give you my final thoughts on the Civivi Vision FG. 
So yeah, guys, thanks for sticking around for the video. And I just want to kind of give you my final thoughts on the Civivi Vision FG. I think it's an incredible knife. I, for the value, it's really hard to beat this set of materials and just the general craftsmanship, the fit and finish of it. You know, the fact that it's made by Civivi and everything that they have came out with recently has just been a banger for sure. For the money, it's hard to beat. Uh, I don't necessarily agree that it was knife of the year for 2023, and I think a lot of you know that honor to me belongs to the Flytanium Arcade. Uh, I have my own reasons for that, but guys, to, this to me was just absolutely the best knife of 2023, uh, and I'm going to die on that hill. But the, the Civivi, that doesn't take anything away from the Vision FG. It's still an excellent knife, and for what you're going to pay for one of them, it, they're well worth the money. Well worth the money. When you can, when you look at the ergonomics, the feel of it, just the, you know, you get the micarta handles. Uh, I know some of them do have a G10, G10 handles, I think, and uh, you can get them with the Damascus steel as well. But, you know, this one's the Nitro V black finish blade. Overall, I like it. I, I like the way that it carries in my pocket. It's a little bit bigger. So, you know, if you don't have a little bit larger hands, this this may not be... Uh, it may be a little big for you, but for me, it fits my hands just perfectly. Uh, you know, the one thing I kind of wish that it had, and I think maybe it's more a design choice than anything, was just some jimping back here. Uh, other than that, I, I think that it's absolutely perfect. You know, there's there's really no glaring problems with it. The pocket clip's decent. The lockup on it is excellent. It's tuned for, you know, that finger flip. It's tuned perfectly for the thumb flip, whether you you're high up or low on it it's just tuned very well you can tell that a lot of thought went into this and uh, i would honestly love to get my hands on one of the uh, Wii vision r's they look absolutely incredible but this knife to me you know would be a serious contender for that uh, knife of the year position um and if you don't have one i would recommend getting one of course i'm going to leave a link in the description down below it'll be an amazon affiliate link so if you want to help support the channel that way that's one way that you can do it uh, we just get a little percentage off of the sale it doesn't cost you any more and a lot of times uh, i'm able to find really good coupons on this stuff and uh, pass the savings on to you sometimes i'll uh, i'll have you know five to twenty percent coupons available on there so definitely check that link down there below while you're down there hey if you want to buy me a cup of coffee uh, you know, go to the coffee link down there and you can buy me a cup of coffee. You can subscribe over there. Since I'm not monetized, I can't, uh, I can't add subscribers to the channel. You know, I can't do like memberships for the channel. So, uh, you know, as of right now, we're just putting everything out of our own pocket. So, uh, if nothing else, guys, leave a like on the video. If you did like it, it helps us out tremendously. If you're not subscribed, make sure and hit that subscribe button down below so that you can stay up to date on the latest and greatest knives the best edc gear that's out there you know we've got reviews coming out all the time on new stuff uh, i've got some cool unboxings coming up that i can't wait to show you guys and uh make sure that you are joining us for that friday pocket dump you know it's wednesday we're halfway through the week we're almost there so make sure that you uh always be carrying and remember the best gear is the gear you have on you average gear reviewers out of here Okay, guys, I almost forgot to show you that trick that I promised, and I definitely don't want to be a liar. So uh, if you if you didn't know this, you have to subscribe. You got to hit the subscribe button down below, okay? Deal? Deal? Okay, all right, deal. Here we go. You ready? How about that? Huh? Subscribe down below.